What you reading there, Matt? Instructions for the lift kit. What lift kit? The lift kit for the K10. That's right. Matt's about ready to do a lift on his 1985 Chevy Four. K10 pickup. I, I am so sorry. It's a uh, 1984 Chevy K10 pickup. He got a rough country lift. It's about three inches tall, or is three inches tall. See, I don't even know anything about what I'm talking about. It's a four inch lift. That's better, okay, I was thinking three was a little short. So it's a four inch lift, and um, he's gonna do it over the next few days. So, um, thanks for watching, and he's never done one of these before, but he says they're not too hard. So we're just gonna document it, and yeah, so thanks for watching. First step is to jack it up and just get some jack stands under the axles. So now Matt's going to jack up the axle and then put some smaller jacks under that to hold that in place. So basically he's just going to take out the four bolts on the U-bolts here and the one bolt on the shackle in the front and then the one bolt over here and so six bolts and he'll just lift out that spring and pop the other one in its place. Ooh. So I apologize there's actually um couple more things that have to come off. You've got to take off the shock absorber because you're going to need one that's, is it just four inches taller? Um, or I whatever. Don't know if it's four inches taller, but it's longer than this one. Yeah, you, you're going to need a longer one since the suspension is going to be hanging down four more inches. <laughs> So I was wrong again. Um, there's actually a few more things that have to come off. The uh, steering arm over here, because there's not one on the other side, but this sort of U-shaped piece has to come off and um, hopefully it'll come off easy. He didn't want to use the pickle fork because you can tear the bushing, but it wouldn't, come out. it wouldn't come out. And it actually went pretty easy. I think it went pretty easy. Those have a little, they're like tapered and they wedge themselves in there. Then they get rusted in there and they're very hard to get out. That's going to be awkward to get out. All right, so we ran into another problem. Um, nothing major, but uh, if you can see back there, right in the center, the bolt is hitting the header. So yeah, the header's got to come out, and that was an unexpected um, problem. So I ran inside for one minute and Matt's got the header completely out. So now Matt's going to take the um, header off the left side. You gotta heat it up so that it'll come out.
Just got to do a little heating here with this one because it's kind of stuck and doesn't want to come out. All right, so the spring is out. Are you going to, um... We're done for the day. It's, uh, I don't know what time it is, but it's getting dark, so we're gonna call it a night. But he did exactly what he wanted to do. He got the front springs out, and now he's ready to just, uh, tomorrow, uh, I believe, just put the new springs in. Um, but we'll see, it's supposed to be really hot, like, I don't know, 95, 100 degrees, something like that. So we don't know what we're gonna do yet just because of the heat. So thanks for watching the first half and, well, first quarter, I guess, cause the second half will be taking the back off and putting the vac back on. All right, so it is now Sunday. Um, we're back and we're gonna do more work on the truck. It's going to be hot, uh, 98 degrees or so for the actual temperature. Um, but it doesn't feel too bad, but uh, we didn't want to be out in the sun all day. So we got a tent. We picked it up at a local store. Um, and we're going to set that up so that we're working in the shade. These are the front springs. They give you all new hardware, new bushings, new bolts, uh, new U-bolts to attach them to the axle, and new uh, shocks. <laughs> kind of like a maze to get it in there. The directions uh, didn't say the calipers needed to be taken off, but the brake line is really tight. So he's gonna take off the caliper just so he can um, uh, let the axle down all the way and not worry about the brake line getting, you know, too tight. He's gonna zip tie the caliper to the shock mount and that way it'll hang and not stretch the brake line. Should the lights be lit or unlit? They'll be green. So he had to lower the axle down so low that he had to take the jack stands out um, to get it on. To put it back in, you actually put the front shackle in first and then the back shackle he's doing now. And then they say to put the U-bolts in last. I ran inside for about two minutes to uh, cool down just because it's so hot. And I came back and Matt had the whole passenger side spring already installed. So I wanted to clarify one thing about the order of putting the bolts in. The directions say to do the front bolt, then the rear bolt, and then the U-bolts. But they don't specifically say whether to do like one side and then get that all done and then do the other side before you put the U-bolts on or to put the you know spring in do the front bolt the back bolt and then do the other side do the front bolt back bolt and then the U-bolts so what Matt was saying what happened was he said that by doing the uh, you know U-bolts you're actually locking the axle to the spring and it's gonna make lowering the axle really difficult so he actually held off putting the u-bolts on until he got both springs with the front and the back bolts in a 
according to the instructions from Rough Country, you want to put the torque to 90 pounds for the steering arm. The steering arm comes with a kit because it's got to raise up to accommodate the taller lift. I might have said this already, but um, everything's done on the front. Um, well, except for the headers. He's still got to put the headers back in. But uh, it's lifted. All the springs are in. And everything's torqued down. Actually, he it's not quite done. He's got to tack up the rain flap. And he's got to get new brake lines for the front. But he's going to wait till he does the back. To see exactly what he needs the hoses here for the lines are just a little short and he's also got to get um, an extension for the sway bar now on the internet most people said that you don't have to do anything extra for a four inch lift you can just unbolt the old one put the new one in but there were a few people who said you don't really know until you actually go to do it because everything is unique on each truck um, even from the same year, not every truck is identical. So you never really know for sure what you're going to encounter. But um, yeah, he's really happy he did it. And I think it looks pretty good. Today is Monday. Matt got out of work oh, maybe half hour ago, an hour ago. And I knew he'd want to do it. He doesn't care about temperature. He's ready to start working on the back of his vehicle. So even though it's 98 point five degrees he's gonna do it all right phase two time to replace the rear suspension so i think the back is going to actually go quicker than the front um i think it's going to be easier you don't have all the suspension but matt said it's still going to be difficult. First thing to come off is the shock. Thankfully the uh, you know the bolts and everything are in really good shape. No no major rust or anything so everything comes off pretty easy. Safety first. All right, so today is a new day. This is day four of working on uh, the lift. He got the um, driver's side U-bolts off last night. His uh, impact gun overheated last night because it was like 100 degrees. And... Um, What's that? It yeah, it stopped working, so he couldn't finish it. So he just gave up and came in, plus it was getting dark. So today he got home from work, took the one remaining bolt off, so the U-bolts are off. He's taken the front bolt off, which is the next one you do, and now he's working on the back one here, which uh, once he gets that off, the spring can come out. One issue that's popped up is the brake lines. Again, the lift kit says you don't have to put new brake lines in, but um, they're very tight, and the axle's gotta get lowered probably six inches at least to allow uh, for that other spring to come in because it's got such a huge angle. So he's trying to work on a way to see what to do about those. Um, the lift kit said he wouldn't have to do anything with the brake lines except maybe reroute one but we'll see 
also another thing he's going to leave the spring in place it's not attached but he's gonna just leave it there and then take both of them out at the same time heavy rains came through Matt wanted to keep working so we set up the tent it actually worked out pretty well the propane torch wasn't really cutting it no pun intended um, yeah no so the the propane porch really wasn't getting the job done at heating up bolts so uh, we ran to Lowe's and picked up a map propane tank or whatever it's called not probably propane but anyway so yeah we picked one up it was uh, 50 bucks With the jacks in this position, the axle's not low enough to get the spring in. So he unclipped the brake lines from, you know, all their attachment points so that it has some flexibility so he can lower the uh, axle down even lower. 76 pounds. We asked him if he needed help. He said no. He's very stubborn. No, it's too hard to have two people in the wheel well. behind here and push forward. Just be careful if it kicks, I don't want you to hit in the face. And just go like for three seconds. Ooh. Again. Hold it. Keep holding. Oh, hold the button? Yep. Oh. I said good, but you couldn't hear me. Oh. <laughs> so I can hit it forward. Now pull it. So we spent about an hour trying to get the leaf springs in and we could just not get them to line up correctly. The axle was just crooked for some reason and Matt's gonna explain what he did to fix it. It wouldn't, the axle wouldn't come back enough because it was getting the uh, parking brake cables holding it. So I had to cut the little um, loop that the parking brake cable was in to give it enough uh, room to- That's it? Pull back, yep. So we wasted an hour? So all I had to do was cut that and it gave it enough play I guess to pull the axle back all right so it's day five and got a little bit more to do and then it'll be done so last night um, this is actually a better picture um, of that clip or the bracket thing that Matt had to cut that's the one that uh, he wasted some time because they didn't tell you to take the parking brake cable and cut that uh, bracket that was holding it on there uh, until like pages after they told you to put the spring in but you couldn't get the spring in without taking that bracket out so kind of a catch-22 but after he did that he read ahead saw to do that and uh, took it out and got the u-bolts on in literally like five minutes each side if he'd only read that ahead, you know, first. Next step is to put the 
new shocks in and then he's got to wait because the brake lines are a little short they uh he can't yeah he's got to replace the brake lines um which you know he didn't want to have to do and that's why he got this kit because they said he wouldn't have to do it but he actually does have to do it and what you use the lock washer too shock is going in here's a tip matt wants to pass along to everyone he said if you can sometimes you can't just the way the the like the shock has to be extended but he said if possible keep the uh, strap on the shock that keeps it closed that way when you go to put it on it's easier to work with and you're not dealing with a shock that's fully extended shock absorbers are in springs are on bolts are tightened time to put the tires on That annoying sound you hear in the background is a chainsaw and a generator. We had a really bad tropical storm come through. It was actually a hurricane, but then it lowered to a tropical storm and power went out. We've lost three telephone poles on our street and our street's still blocked at one end. So. We don't have power. So Matt is just uh, working on his car, putting the new brake lines in, or brake hoses as he calls them. Well, we're pretty much at the final phases of the lift. Uh, the brakes, or the brake hoses are in. Matt got extended ones. The steering stabilizer extender piece is in is this way oh my bad it's this metal plate up here okay that's it that's what it was here's the back end brake hose um no. the breather for the yeah. differential that's in he had to extend it um, by about six inches He's gonna get a new hose for that whole thing, but for now he uh, just rigged up a little extension at the end Nancy's in position to press the brake pedal Holding For whatever you got to do to holding the brake pedal when you bleed them All right, four tires are on. One jack removed, two jacks removed. The drop is inevitable. The truck is done. Matt's gonna take it for a maiden voyage. We are staying behind, ready to tow it if we need to. This will be his first time actually getting in it since it's been lifted. He just took a shower, that's not sweat. He just doesn't dry off for some reason. He had no problem getting in. It does run. We've started it up, made sure everything's good, made sure the brakes are good. Still got the generator going. Haven't had power in 
three or four days. It's probably gonna let it warm up for a second. Brake lights are on. Truck is moving. There's the guys down the street doing the lines. Hopefully we'll have power tonight.